Hey guys, Flymatcher here, and let's play Mega Man 2 for the Game Boy. Now, um, since this is the first one that actually uses the Roman numerals on the Game Boy, I'm going to go ahead and clear up any confusion that might spawn before it starts. In Japan, the Game Boy games are known as Rockman World, and, you know, the main series is known as Rockman. And that works fine. In North America, and I guess anywhere that's English-speaking that got these games, both series are known as Mega Man. And to make matters worse, the first seven Mega Man games in the main series used the Roman numerals. In Japan, they always use the numbers for the main series, so it gets a little confusing. But the way the games are differentiated is the main games are using actual numbers, like Mega Man 2 with the number 2. Game Boy games are using Roman numerals, like Mega Man 2 with the Roman numeral II. So just wanted to clear that up right there. The games are different and should be differentiated as such. Anyways, Mega Man 2 actually has a really, really complex story. Even after his crushing defeat at the hands of Mega Man, Dr. Wily was already planning his next scheme. If he could get his hands on the time machine, the time skimmer, that was being developed at the Time Space Research Laboratory, the Kronos Institute, he thought he just might be able to change the past. After stealing the time machine, Wily had wanted to set out immediately on a trip across time, but had to put an emergency breakdown on his plans when he discovered that the time machine had a serious flaw. Meanwhile, Dr. Light had been dispatched to the Time-Space Laboratory to investigate. With the help of Rush's super sense of smell, he was able to deduce that it was none other than Dr. Wily behind the theft. Having a bad feeling about the incident, Dr. Light quickly called upon Mega Man and Rush to search out Dr. Wily's whereabouts. Dr. Wily, having finally managed to modify the time machine, discovers that the time machine could now only travel into the future and back, not into the past. Dr. Wily modified his plan and decided instead to spy on Mega Man's future. Traveling 37.426 years into the future, Wily found that the future was peaceful, as his future self had reformed and Mega Man, no longer needing weapons, had been reset back into a peaceful, housekeeping robot. Recognizing this chance, Wily convinces his future self to abduct the now defenseless Mega Man. And the story goes on a little bit, but it's kind of spoilerish. And I, I did all this on the title screen because I actually like the title screen music, which is kind of rare for me to say about this game because this game has really bad sound. Yeah, this screen's especially bad with it. Um, I will note that unlike Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge, even though we have returning robot masters, their themes are entirely different for their stage this time around. But I'm going to start with Metal Man since I already have my colors set up for Metal Man. And you're going to notice that, uh, you know, you got a lot of the same things in the stage, but holy crap, they do not pull the punches this time around. Spikes on the second screen. It's a little ridiculous if you ask me, putting spikes that early. But, you know, we got more of these guys on the wheels that come after us, but they're pretty easy. Just like before. And we got these, uh, stomping things that do a crap ton of damage. This game does take place after Mega Man 3, so Mega Man does know how to slide now. And if you didn't pick up from the, uh, story that I read off, Mega Man also has the assistance of his buddy Rush. Uh, just like in Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge, we have these moles, and we can actually see them in the ceiling there, which is nice. I don't know if this is just because I'm playing on a Super Game Boy or not. But, I mean, it's nice to be able to see what's attacking you. Uh, there was actually even a stomper hidden in the ceiling there, so I certainly hope that you can see that on a normal Game Boy, because that would be complete bullcrap if that stomper was just hidden there. Anyway, 
the stage does resemble Metal Man's original stage in Mega Man 2 quite a bit with all the conveyor belts, but there is a clear difference in the two stages. This one actually has a lot more conveyor belts than Metal Man's original stage did, so... Oh boy. These Mets are a pain, they move so slow. Thankfully we had the slide to get through that small area there. Alright, that Met can be a little bit tricky to take out. Uh, there's a free guy that we actually can't reach yet, because we don't start with Rush Coil, like in Mega Man 3. And there's a lot of these wheel guys. Good thing they're really easy to take out. Uh, one change you're going to notice right there is that uh, no longer does the entire world freeze when energy is being filled up. So that's nice. And already we're at Metal Man. Metal Man himself has incorporated several strategy differences. First off, he's going to do nothing until you do anything. Uh, like in the NES, he will jump across if you get too close. But unlike the NES, whenever you attack, he will always counter with two Metal Blades, and the conveyor belt never changes directions. He's not too hard to take out, although it can be a little tight trying to dodge the uh, Metal Blades. And I'm going to get hit several times attempting to do so, but as long as <laughs> as long as I'm at least trading hits with him, it's going to be no trouble because he takes... I do believe he takes a little bit extra damage from the Mega Buster. But I find that if you just wait until you're all the way to the left, take, take a jump, and at the apex of your jump take two shots, that you'll hit him and you'll be in a good position to jump over both of his Metal Blades that he shoots out. Assuming your timing is good. Mine is clearly not good, but, you know, whatever. I guess I was wrong about him taking extra damage to the Mega Buster. It looks like he only takes one pixel per shot. But that's fine. We have defeated Metal Man. And for our efforts, we are rewarded with... Metal Blade, and Rush Marine. Nice! The music is still pretty ear-splitting. I'm not really fond of the music in this game. The title screen track I like, but the rest of it... Ugh. I guess they have nice compos compositions, but uh... Ugh. I don't know, they just really screwed up the sound when programming this game, because it all sounds really, really bad. Anyways, that's going to do it for this episode of Let's Play Mega Man 2 for the Game Boy. I'm Blaumadger, and I will see you guys later.